So recently I received this question in email. Um, I made this video a little while back on ring oscillators. And we said that a ring oscillator is just composed of a series of inverters. And I said that it could be composed out of any odd number of inverters. So what about one inverter? What happens when we have just a single inverter? Is this, uh, does this work as an oscillator? And so the analysis that we did previously, the large signal analysis with the ring oscillator, was that we said, well, if we have an increasing voltage at the input, uh, that's going to be a decreasing voltage, a delayed decreasing voltage at the output of that inverter, followed by a further delayed increasing voltage and a further delayed decreasing voltage. So in the end, we should see this signal transition from high to low. And we should see this repeated period of, or this repeated delayed um, transition from high to low, high to low, high to low. And that'll lead to oscillation. And we also analyze this in terms of the phase shift of the, of the circuit, of the small signal model. So can we apply the large signal model to our single inverter? Um, well, let's try what happens. So if we say that we've got an increasing voltage at the input and then a decreasing voltage at the output, this seems to indicate that we should see the same, same thing happen. We should see this followed by a decreasing voltage at the input. But there's a problem with this analysis and that's that the output and the input are the same voltage. So one cannot change independently of the other. Um, so we can't have this delayed, uh, ph this phenomena of delay and positive feedback leading to oscillation because there's no delay in the system. There's no, um, there's no way of causing oscillation. And we can see this more clearly if we draw out the inverter as a set of transistors. So we know that an inverter is just composed of a NMOS and a PMOS. And this is the configuration of inverter. And if the output is connected to the input, then the tr two transistors are connected like this. Um, the output is equal to the input. And so there can be no oscillation because there's, there, there is no feedback. Uh, and you might just say, well, just because the output is equal to the input doesn't mean that it can't change with time. Uh, and very well, that's true. But why it won't change becomes more clear when we draw the circuit out in a slightly different way. So if we just draw the PMOS like this with the gate connected to the output or input if you prefer, and the NMOS like this, then we see that this is nothing but two diode connected transistors. There's no feedback. There's nothing special about this circuit. Uh, there's no input connected to the output. It's just a single, um, very linear, if you will, circuit. And if we wanted to analyze this circuit, since it's so simple, we could actually do it by solving for the current. Uh, exactly, or at least uh, as exact as the square law will get you. Um, and we can say that the current in the PMOS, the current IP, is just the same thing as the current flowing through the NMOS, IN. Or that KP, KP, uh, and this is VSG, times VSG minus VT squared is equal to KN times VGS, and in this case VGS is this, minus VT squared. And you can take square roots and solve this equation, but what you'll end up with is that you'll, you'll end up with this voltage V1 or VGS uh, being a certain value, a certain fixed value, or since this is a quadratic equation, um, and here, let's, let's just solve it for, for simplicity's sake. Uh, we know that VSG is just VDD minus V out, uh, where this, this, or V1, I guess we've called it here. So not V out, but V, 
v1. And we know that VGS is just equal to V1 because it's between V1 and ground. So if we continue along this li these lines, we'll see we get KP times VDD minus V1 minus VT squared is equal to KN times V1 minus VTN squared. Or sorry, this should be VTP. And so this is a quadratic equation which you can factor and solve for v1, but you'll only get two answers. v1 is equal to some value, and v1 is equal to some other value. And one of them will be nonsensical because it will be negative, and the other one will make sense. But the point is that you'll get v1 is equal to some constant answer. Uh, so v1 won't be a function of time. This is, this is a static circuit. Um, and so I just wanted to make a video answering that question because I thought it was so interesting and so subtle uh, and a, an example of, of really, really well thought out, um, well thought out analysis. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.